Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Krzysztofer Grabowski, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco Systems. Today I want to show you something really cool. The Dynamic Attributes Connector is now integrated in the Firewall Management Center. It's super easy to enable, it supports redundancy, and you will have three new connectors available. Let's see how it works. Until the 7.4 release of Firewall software, the CSDAC was available as either a standalone application running on a Linux machine or a cloud-delivered plugin in Cisco Defense Orchestrator. Now with the new integrated form factor, the CSDAC runs within your management center, allowing you to consume attribute feeds out of the box. The CSDAC is a container application that you can enable in your management center running 7.4 release of software. The managed firewalls must support dynamic objects, therefore you need them to run at least 7.0 release of software. The integrated CSDAC supports all cloud and public feed connectors provided by Cisco so far. When you enable CSDAC, you need to ensure you allow connectivity from your management center towards the provider feeds you want to consume. The CSDAC redundancy is provided on top of the native, high availability functionality of the management center. The integrated CSDAC supports all cloud and public feed connectors that's been available so far. In this release, we also added CSDAC connectors providing dynamic objects for WebEx and Zoom services, as well as a generic text connector that allows you to subscribe to an IP address feed. When you enable the CSDAC in Management Center, you need to consider the maximum supported number of connectors. Depending on your Management Center model, you will be able to configure between 10 to 30 connectors at a time. If you reach the limit, the system will not allow you to configure more connectors. Starting from 7.4 release of software, we included support for passive identity with eyes having Azure AD as the backend identity store. If you consider this use case, please note that the Azure Entra ID realm is counted as a connector within CSDAC. Also, with virtual platforms, it is strongly recommended to provision additional 1 gig of memory for each 5 connectors you configure. Before I switch over to the demonstration, I want to spend a moment to zoom out and show you the CSDAC in a wider context of the attribute based policy which makes your firewall rules dynamic, more secure, and much easier to manage. The Dynamic Attributes Connector is just one of the methods of bringing dynamic objects to the firewall policy. The CSDAC focuses primarily on the cloud server resources and the public feeds. At the same time, you can configure your firewall to consume identity attributes from ICE, terminal services agent, and remote access solutions, as well as other external systems including ACI Fabric, Secure Workload, or Cisco XDR. With real-time user and server identity awareness, your firewall policy dynamically adapts to the changes, becomes more secure with focused up-to-date firewall rules, and is much easier to manage. Now let's have a look at CSDAC in Management Center and how easily you can set it up. I'll show you the new Zoom and WebEx dynamic objects and how to consume a flat IP list with generic text connector. Lastly, we'll have a look at the CSDAC and the Management Center's high availability. Here is my FMC. It is a vanilla configuration with one firewall registered. Let's go to Objects, Object Management, then external attributes and dynamic object. As you can see, no dynamic objects have been configured yet, and the FMC gives us a nice diagram showing free CSDAC deployment options. FMC with integrated CSDAC, CSDAC embedded in CDO, and a standalone on-prem version. For each of those options, you'll see the list of steps required to set up your CSDAC and the FMC. You can also have a look at the logical diagram of the design when you click on how it works.
If you select one of the options and click Start, FMC will cross-launch you to a relevant resource that will help you to move forward. When you choose on-prem version and click Start, you'll be redirected to Ansible Galaxy Collection where you can download a CSDAC bundle as well as read the installation guidelines. If you choose CSDAC in CDO, you'll be cross-launched to CSDAC in your CDO tenant. The option we'll choose for this demo is the FMC with integrated CSDAC. This takes you to the CSDAC integration page within your local FMC. This is actually just a shortcut as you can still reach CSDAC using the integration tab. By default, the CSDAC is disabled. Before you enable CSDAC, remember to ensure your FMC has direct internet access or you configured proxy in the management interface configuration. Enabling CSDAC is one-time setup. Once you click this toggle, the CSDAC will be on until you explicitly disable it. Let me enable the CSDAC now to show you the installation process. There is a couple of steps the FMC has to do to bring up the CSDAC. First, the Docker environment is set up. Then the FMC downloads the latest core and connectors images from a Cisco site. This is the reason why I emphasized the need for the internet access before you enable CSDAC. Once the images are verified, the CSDAC service is instantiated. If you are running your FMC in high availability, the same process will be triggered on the secondary FMC in the background. And that's it. Now you have your CSDAC instance ready to go. The CSDAC in FMC has three tabs. The dashboard shows you the snapshot of your setup and frankly, you should be able to do most, if not all, of the configuration from here. You also have the Connectors and Dynamic Attribute Filters tabs, which you may recall from the on-prem CSDAC. One thing that is different from the on-prem and cloud-delivered CSDAC is the lack of the Adapters tab. That's because the integrated CSDAC has an implicit connection to the hosting FMC, and it makes no sense to make you configure it yourself. In this demonstration, I want to show you the new connectors we introduced in 7.4 release of software. These are WebEx, Zoom, and the generic text connector. Let's start with WebEx. The connector requires you to only set the name. You can also tweak your pull interval. Now let me explain the provider reserved IP option. Most of the WebEx services run in Cisco-owned IP space. However, there are some components hosted in Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Services. When the provider reserved IP toggle is disabled, the CSDAC imports Cisco-owned IP prefixes only. If you turn it on, you will get both Cisco-owned prefixes as well as IP address ranges reserved by WebEx in Azure and AWS. Once you decide on your setup, you can test connectivity and click Save. Now let's have a look at the objects created by the connector. First thing you'll notice is that the deployment options you've seen here are no longer displayed. The FMC will show you the hints only until the first dynamic object is configured. Now we have two dynamic objects representing WebEx services, calling and meeting and messaging. Starting from 7.4, you will see here two small but very useful features, the refresh button and the timestamp of the last change made to the dynamic object. Let's go back to the CSDAC and configure a Zoom connector. Similarly, as with WebEx connector, you just need to set the name and pull interval. Let me save, and we can have a look at the new dynamic objects. I'll use the refresh button, and we can see the connector created six new dynamic objects as per Zoom IP public feed. Now let's have a look at the generic text connector. When we configure WebEx, Zoom, Office 365, or GitHub connectors, 
we don't have to set or load the URLs of the public feeds of those services. The URLs are pre-configured in the connectors and not even configurable. This makes your life easier when you configure connectors for the most popular applications, but at the same time you had no option to add custom feeds that were not pre-configured by Cisco. The generic text connector now gives you the option to bring your own IP address feeds into CSDAC and the dynamic objects. In this demo, I'll use an IP address block list of common botnet command and control servers provided by Feodo Tracker Abuse CH. If we click on the feed, you can see there are currently three IP addresses published. However, this list is dynamic and will change when new command and control servers are detected or some of the ones on the list become inactive for a longer period of time. With CSDAC and the generic text connector, we can use the URL of this feed and create a corresponding dynamic object that will auto-update to whatever IP addresses are published by Feldo Tracker. I'll set the name and the poll interval. Optionally, we can cache the certificate of the feed to ensure CSDAC connects to the legitimate server. Next, we can test the connection and save. When we switch to external attributes, you'll see the new dynamic object with three mapped IP addresses that we've seen in the feed. We can try to refresh and see if there was anything new published. You can also check what is the timestamp of the latest update to that dynamic object. Lastly, I want to show you how to check if CSDAC services are up and running on both the primary and secondary FMC. First, let's confirm that the FMC HA is running smoothly. The FMC I used for the configuration is the secondary active and the peer is primary standby. The status and synchronization is healthy and OK, so the CSDAC service should be running on both FMCs. Now let's switch to the CLI and enter expert root mode. The CSDAC configuration files and scripts are located in user local SF CSDAC directory. Here you will find the master CLI script that is the Swiss Army knife for the CSDAC troubleshooting. I'll run master CLI with status command to see what containers are spinned up. You can see there are five containers running the core services. These include Boolean expression engine, backend and messaging with FMC. Just below that, you'll see the connectors containers. If you remember, we configured three connectors, Zoom, WebEx and generic text connector, which are listed here. So as you can see, each connector is running in his own Docker container instance. When we switch over to the standby FMC and run the same command, we will see the same set of running containers. So all changes done to the CSDAC running on the active FMC will be reflected on the standby FMC, providing redundancy in case of the FMC switchover. Thank you very much for your time watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.